Hey, good morning, Misfits. It is March 15th, I think. It's Sunday. <clears throat> it's the weekend edition. I hope you all are doing amazing. And I hope that today brings you great value and great joy. Uh, go ahead and start by sending out your three messages. I got to tell you, that's made a huge difference um, with a couple of the things this past week that have been going on here in Costa Rica uh, for our event. Um, I'm down in San Jose, Costa Rica right now. I'm at the, the Wyndham Hacienda having some fun. It's kind of my day off. I'm going to have some of the leaders come over. We may have some lunch together, go in the pools, do whatever. But because Monday afternoon, the, the, the president of, of Costa Rica closed down all public events and the convention center that we had reserved for our event got shut down. So we got people who have bought tickets, people who are traveling, people who are already on their way, <clears throat> getting ready to head towards Costa Rica. And good morning, RBP. And, and we were going to, at 3 o'clock in the morning, Monday morning, or actually Tuesday morning, 3 a.m., uh, we decided, the corporate decided, because they were thinking about closing and or not closing, and, and leaders were saying, hey, listen, let's just shut it down. It might be the best thing for us. But there was something that happened, a, trans, a, a, a transition that took place that everybody said, we're going to get it done. And in three days, you guys know what it takes to put on a corporate event. But now you're putting on a corporate event internationally. You're, English isn't your primary language. You do have a couple of people on the team that speak Spanish. But those people who are in decision are missing some of the essences of conversations. So I say all of that to say, <clears throat> if you remember the... Uh, the pink robe lady story of trying to get to Vegas or getting to Vegas, um, what she had to do, all of the things she had to do in that day and still had half, she could finish them all things that took, you know, on the list for over a year that she got done and had a half hour to spare. It's amazing what happens when you, when you want to put your focus in. Um, yesterday, <clears throat> cause I, I I'm, I'm blessed that I get to have conversations with the corporate team all the time. Standing in the back of the room, they're asking me questions because all of Latin America is my group. And so they want to make sure, be, and, they, and they see how they're, they're learning more of how, how well I interact with them. Let me just put, that's a nice way of putting that. This is my family and you don't screw with it. So understanding that, and having conversations with them about control that's hap that we need to start to put that, weave that into our conversations. We need to inspire people to take control of their own life, to take control of what they can, to, stop, to, to reduce the, the amount of hysteria that happens around bu buying toilet paper, for goodness sake. So the messages that, we, the <clears throat> that I was sending out <clears throat> to some of the key leaders, the elite team. I know it changed the event for me. Uh, I'll just say that. So I would encourage you, if you're not doing that on a regular basis, <clears throat> do that more often. So I guess our conversation today can revolve around what are you doing in this, in this pandemania, in this hysteria? It, it was pretty clear to me after spending four days here, three days here, uh, having conversations with the people who did show up, having conversations with them, and explaining to them some of the mindsets of people and how and why they do things. Right. What, what's the reason for some of the, the, the mass hysteria that's happening? Now, I understand it's critical. It's important. We need to take we need to take um, necessary steps to keep ourselves safe and healthy. But if you look at it. One of the things that's most interesting <clears throat> is that. The governments want to protect their citizens. 
totally get that. The cities, the towns, the provinces, they want to protect their citizens. They want to protect them <clears throat> from something they can't control. Get that. They want to protect them from something that spreads. I get that. In doing so, they can't protect them. They can't protect their wealth. They can't protect the way they generate income. They can't protect what's going to allow them to take care of their family. They're trying to protect the soul, the body, but not the system. And the system is the family unit, the individual who's able to take care of themselves. So it's my perception that if you begin to have conversations about control, about what are they doing to put controls in place? What, what do they have control over? This goes back 2,500 years ago to Epictetus. Decide what you have control over and what you do not have control over. People are panicking, their, their, their retirement is going away. <clears throat> I'm sure there's tr a tremendous amount of arbitrage that's happening in the, in the market. The challenge is, is that you're going, to need, you're going to need to figure out a way for them to get started with very simple dollars. They're going to have to have an ROI on their money almost immediately. And if you can't show them an ROI on their money almost immediately, and what I mean immediately, 48 hours is a long time to people who are trying to figure out what to do to eat. Are we there yet? Not for most of us in the cities we live in. But I can tell you, I've had people that came to my event that six months ago were in that situation and it had nothing to do with some pandemic. So my question to you is, no, somebody did not ask a specific question, Brittany. This is just me talking about uh, conversations I was having with my leaders. Um, I met with 20 of my leaders down here from the six different countries and we're having conversations of how do we deal with what's coming to Latin America? And Italy's already experienced it, right? 60 million people shut down. Um, my son's school extended spring break another week. They, they stopped all sporting events. So I can only speak from my fraction, right? We talked about thinking, it fractions reality. I'm talking about only from my fraction of the reality that, that, I've, that I'm aware of that exists. And as I have more conversations, I become more informed. But the reality of this idea of control and, and needing to create an ROI on people's investments right now is going to be paramount. It's going to be critical. It's actually going to be the one driving factor that's going to allow our businesses to continue to expand. They've just lost their job. Disney laid off all of its people. It's going to pay them for four weeks. Um, companies over 50,000, uh, oh, com companies over 50 people, over 50 people are going to be sending people home, right? Because the governor of Utah says they need to be able to work from home. We need to give them a chance to be able to stay safe, but still continue their income. So this whole idea of working from home, there's people who lack discipline that are going to be let go because they're not going to be able to perform in that environment. Going to work was their only thing. So this whole idea of, of, of the dialogue and the conversations of what we used to say and how we used to communicate with people about our, our business model, has changed forever. So there'll be folks who won't change a single thing and they'll be dealing with a very, very small ping pong ball size community. But right now, this, this has gone from the size of a beach ball to the size of, of Neptune. The people who are going to be looking for a gig, looking for something on the side, looking for something to supplement. Now, in Latin America, if you've got business in Latin America, I would encourage you to have conversations, have, have conversations <clears throat> based on language that are for women. Because even though it's the machismo world, women are going to be the ones responsible because they, they used to spend the money, they would, get, they would get an allowance, they would get money to spend, they would get, they would get income that they could take care of the family. <clears throat> This is a very general statement. But now these guys are going to be coming home and mom's there with the two kids. Mom's there with the one kid. And the guy's ego isn't letting him go 
look for more work or figure out something else because he's he's been beaten down or or depressed <clears throat> so now all of a sudden mom's responsible well mom can't go get a job because my bride it was very rare that my bride left mason with me in the very beginning i'll just put it that way we're probably not the best caretakers of infants the first time what do they what do we do right by the time you have the second one then you probably figured it out so there's this whole change in dialogue absolutely so here's the challenge with with college students michael is asking them what opportunities do they have because <clears throat> right i i'm sure if my dad knew the phrase when I was in my 20s, he would have said it an awful lot. You're right, I'm rich, let's move on. Because there's a technology awareness, because you have access to a variety of things, there, college students, so please understand this, Larry Thompson teaches this. Guys, 53 years in the profession, teaches this, he helped build Herbalife. He, he's built a second billion dollar company and he's on his way to his building his third billion dollar company through consulting and guiding them and helping them weave into the fabric what's necessary. Here's what's important to understand. There's, there's three things you need to pay attention to. Audience, language, and behavior. So I'm speaking to people who are of a psychographic, they're being affected by this, by the virus. When you, when you ask for a specific market segment called the college student, it goes back to audience, language, and behavior. So the, audi the, the audience is that generation, right? The college student, that's a, that's a narrow niche. When you have a conversation with them, you need to ask them because they come from a state of knowing. They come from a, 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 a place of having tremendous knowledge the brain still hasn't finished growing, but they come from this place of they, they have this tremendous knowledge. Begin to interview them, begin to find out what is the change, what is the, what is the, 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 the psychology that's changed, that's adapted to this new situation, right? They used to go, they used to, go to school and now, they've got, and now they get to do it online. The challenge I'm going to see is a lot of people are going to drop out of college and when they drop out of college, they're going to need to go into the workforce and there's not a workforce. So they're going to need a, a, some kind of digital workforce to do, to do work with. Because that idea of <clears throat> the initial Zoom interview is going to now be the final interview for the next few months. So they need to be, they need to learn how to publicly speak. They need to learn how to create a presence, right? If they're going to, to, to do things digitally, but people are going to look for something to do online. I'm sure <clears throat> if you could see the algorithms from Google and Yahoo, how the search engines have absolutely gone berserk, right? You can see the search engine results, I'm sure on coronavirus and what do you do and, and all of these different things. But what's, what's, I bet the part that we don't see is what people are trying to do to figure out that side gig. So I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some, some feedback. <clears throat> hey, Brittany, good morning. Hey, so I've been thinking so heavily about this um, because I'm going to speak to people tomorrow on via digital and I'm speaking to people on Thursday in person and I just feel like the responsibility. Thank you. Are you taking three? Uh, no, no, thank you. Sorry. So um, I just feel like a really grand responsibility to them, not for them. And I'm just, I've been tumbling ideals around in my head for days now on how to best convey that message because I know that people are going to revert back to their natural, like their natural, um, what's the word, tactic of holding on to all of their money when 
holding on to all of your money isn't going to help you. But how can I express that to people and have them making money in an hour? It's very possible to be making money within an hour. But how do I express that to them? Because they it always seems too good to be true. Like, I feel like Caesar for Planet of the Apes here. It's like, oh my God, like, it's so, that barrier that I'm trying to permeate. So here's the question. <clears throat> Can you produce predictable results live in person <clears throat> in an hour? It is likely. It's, it's, it's Not likely. highly likely. Not, not highly likely. Nobody <clears throat> right now with, with the fear right. that nobody's going to do anything highly likely. Exactly. So I, I would figure out. So if there, so there is a way to make money in an hour and that's by enrolling people, right? That's where a lot of people in your, in, yes. in your, your business model. So people can enroll people inside of 20 minutes. When yes. you start, when you start to ask them to learn something new in a state of panic, it ain't going to sink in. Their prefrontal cortex is shut down. If they're coming, if they're coming to sit with you, depending upon their age, depending upon their investments, depending upon how much retirement they have or however much they have in savings, you're going to have to be able to demonstrate duplicatable, predictable results. And the only way that you can do that in your business model is by enrollment. Because the trading there is no, nobody will guarantee a result. At least I'm not that. I'm. So that being said, unless you've got a buddy of mine runs algorithms and they, they've got five people that all they do is, is run algorithms in dark rooms somewhere and they can guarantee a 13% return minimum um, through, through trading. And I've had it as high as 95%. So, but that's a whole nother world. You've got to buy into that world. That's just a whole nother thing. So that, that has predictable, duplicatable results. But when you sit in front of people tomorrow and Thursday, the thing, the only thing that you can, the only thing that you can guarantee them is an income based on enrollment. They can offset their income through learning and going through a process of how to uh, leverage technology and there's going to be you're, you're talking to a very there's a there's a community out there there's a niche out there that is absolutely excited about hearing about technology and how to do trading there's absolutely so you're going to have to cast your net wider and there's going to have to be some um, initial uh, I don't want to say polarization uh, initial conversations that get people clear on on are they the right folks to hear this message because <clears throat> what's going to happen now for all of us and this is this is me making assumptions and we all know what assumptions do what's going to happen for all of us <clears throat> is we're going to instantly be, be compared to something we shouldn't be compared to Here's the, that's, that's the not so good news. That's the bad news. The good news is, is they don't have the right to complain about our business anymore. They can't say it's one of those things. They have lost that option. Their job is gone. Their income is gone. Their company is sending them home to work. Maybe, maybe it's short term. Maybe they've got laid off. Those, they got to, they got, they got to take their, their uh, paid vacation but their option to say that we're one of those things, a pyramid is absolutely gone. Because what you do with this, say that, say this hysteria, <clears throat> say this hysteria only lasts for another three months. Anybody you bring in now, anybody you have joined your ranks and starts to create an income, will become your greatest advocate as this thing starts to clear up. And you, you will find you will have some of the most staunch 
people who are absolutely against, who are, would never, ever, never, ever do this, now become the biggest advocates. So this idea that you have a, a responsibility to those folks, totally agree. Totally agree. The reality is, is that your, your level of presentation is going to have to absolutely go through the roof. And I don't mean energy. I mean the ability to ask questions and realize that you're sitting with a whole bunch of people who are scared but won't let you know that. And the, and the first time that you, and you know I love you, the first time that you say this is, you, you throw in an injected value of should, their prefrontal cortex is gonna shut down. And they're not gonna hear a word after that. They will nod and they will in, engage, but their ability to, to make an informed decision has been gone. So when I have conversations with people, I, listen, I, I do a simple thing. Hey, I know life is crazy right now for you. How can I be of best service to you? Because if, if you go with the how can I be of service, it means you have a wildly uh, advanced and amazing array of opportunities of solutions. The challenge is, is most people are going to come at folks with the one thing they have, their business model, their company, their product, their this, their that, their other. They're going to come with one thing and they can't hear one thing because it wasn't their decision. The reason people buy toilet paper is because the only reason they bought toilet paper, the majority of people is so that they can be in control of something. And this is the, the true epitome of people love to buy, they hate to be sold. And right now, everybody has a fear they're going to be sold something. They're being sold this story. When they hear people saying, well, it's a, it's a cold, why is everybody freaking out? <clears throat> Why'd they shut down all of Italy? <clears throat> I say all of that to say, <clears throat> I say all of that to say, people want to have control over their decisions they're about to make. I, I could be totally wrong, but you know what? I'm probably am wrong. Probably shouldn't listen to anything I'm saying. Take it, what you can from it and see what makes sense. So, Because right now, for my in-person presentation, I'm going to be talking about the compensation plan. And I kind of have an idea of how I want to attack it um, or just how I want to convey the message. But I'm thinking of a way that I can just open it up to get people to understand a little bit more. So I'm, I'm thinking I like what you said about, you know, I know that, that I'm standing in front of a room or I'm sitting with you guys and a lot of you are afraid and some of you may be so afraid that you are even afraid to say that you're afraid. I understand. And oh, no. we're not connected yet. I can hear you. Yeah, okay. I can hear you. So, so, so let me share this with you. So I'm going to give you a secret in public speaking. <clears throat> when you're a presenter, how fast can you get them on your side? How fast can they pull you into their team? And when you point out something to the audience, and you say, you've got, listen, I know some of you are scared. <clears throat> What's the first, if I, if I were to tell you, I know you're scared, the first thing you would say in your head is, I'm not scared. So what I would encourage you to say, I, I'll never tell you anything to say, I would encourage you, you might benefit from saying something like, <clears throat> you know, I've been in audiences for a couple of years now. And I've been in audiences here in the last couple of weeks, whether it be online or in person, and something's changed. 
it's the same message, it's the same people, it's the same demographic, it's the same everything. But would it be fair to say that I think we could all agree something's changed? I was in a room not too long ago, and this could be you saying this, I was in a room not too long ago, and I got this feeling that some of the folks in the room were a little scared. Now, I don't know about you. <clears throat> I know when I look at things, I get scared a little bit sometimes too. I've got some people that I can call who kind of help me put my feet back on the ground. But would it be fair to say that we can all agree that something's at least changed? Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm trying to write as fast as I can. Yeah. But the key is. But I get the gist. Yeah, but the key is is to say, <clears throat> it can we all can we all agree that something's changed? So basically, the way that I was presenting it or speaking it, I was creating a subconsciously. I was creating. A separation as oh, if I cannot relate. Absolutely. Because okay, okay. you might be scared and and maybe you're not scared, but maybe you're gonna be scared. Well what if you're the one that's scared and they all go, Oh my God, she's just like me. Yeah. I can even use like right now, I'm on the flight to Chicago and like I could literally run laps in this plane. Like if there's nobody on here. Like so take a picture. Like seven minutes. So take a picture of the plane, and that's how you open up the. That's how you open up your compensation plan. You show a picture of the plane, and you say things are changed. Now, here's the good news: I don't run an airline, but if but if my compensation is based on people in the seats, what do you think just happened to my income? Ooh, that's good. Ooh. Well, that's what I said, take a picture. <laughs> Is this gonna be on YouTube? This one, uh, it probably won't be there till I get back tomorrow. So I'll probably have it up there tomorrow. Okay. But here's the other thing. So here's how you break it down to you. If I was the airline, my compensation just went south. There's nobody on this plane. But you know what the challenge is? Don't we all run a little bit of an airline? What do you mean, Brittany? Well, how many of us just had our income walk away? How many of us are sitting with empty hours in our house? Woo! Woo! If you got paid an hour for every seat on this plane that had a person in it, you'd be rich. That's where the airlines were two weeks ago. Some of you may still have companies who absolutely love you. And they're allowing you to work from home. Do you think there's some people who are gonna get lost in the shuffle? I hope that's not you. I know what it's like to be fired from a job or let go from a job. But I also know what it's like to have control. Can you repeat the thing that she said? How many, okay, you said, in a sense, don't we all run an airline? What do you mean, Brittany? How many of us have empty hours at home? Yeah, how many of us have empty seats, empty hours? For the airline, they call it butts and seats. We call it hours <laughs> we get paid for.
Now, when you do your live event, <clears throat> is this event, or the event you're going to in Chicago, is that going to be a live event? Yeah, but I'm just showing up. I'm not presenting. Okay. So um, here, here, here's a suggestion. Uh, if, if I doubt you'll find any, <clears throat> but if you can find some hand sanitizer, I know, is it going to be in a hotel? No. I can probably just pick some up from the store. I would pick some up just to be that caring, a little different, add some value. It's breaking up. Okay. Comments, thoughts, right. food, folks from from that. Anybody have any comments or thoughts or questions on it? <clears throat> so the key is do what you can to be of value because right now if you if you're the one right what I what have I always said <clears throat> for the last 22 years and for however long you've you've known me you've probably heard me say it a couple of dozen times our number one product right now is the solution that could be whether it's a <clears throat> a product that helps with health. It's a product that helps with wealth. There's a variety of things that you can use that you, you can have a conversation about that you, no matter what product you have, it can become the solution. So any other questions or comments? I don't see any hands raised. Just think about what you're going to change in your story. <clears throat> when I say your story, your presentation about your, your, <laughs> about being able to have a conversation with people, what's going to change? How are you going to be, how are you going to be more empathetic? Yeah, but people, they don't need empathy. They need decision. They need control. They need to do something now. <clears throat> yes, you're right. You're dead right. And anybody that you go present that, op that opportunity to, they are going to absolutely crush you with their desperation. And you're not going to be able to do a damn thing about it. Some chats here. Let's see. Oh my gosh, Rihanna, yeah, tourism is gonna go absolutely to nothing. So people are gonna have to learn how to support each other. Uh, there's not a big farming community on the island. So uh, you're still gonna have to pay expensive prices to get stuff brought in. Um, so the conversation of, of and I would, I, would ask, I would ask you to get very good quickly at building internationally over into Puerto Rico. That's still a lot of tourism. You're going to have to figure out a way quickly to learn how to get people, find people globally and through social media, through, through uh, a, a story of, because here's the other thing. You presenting a global opportunity you've got a little bit of a drawback based upon you being on a, on, on a, on a USVI. And the only reason I say that is because of the concept of the interpretation of how people <clears throat> think of the islands. And for no other reason, when they think of a BVI or a USVI, they think of vacation, they think of travel. They think of just um, not, not a global entrepreneur who can teach people how to leverage the arbitrage in foreign sea exchange. I would become, I would start to work very clear 
on being able to provide community, support, conversation. Listen, folks, <clears throat> we've heard this for a long time. <clears throat> we've heard this for a long time. Build your brand. Most of you are looking to build your company's brand. That will not serve you in the long term. That has not served you up until this moment. Here's why. Listen carefully. Listen carefully to me. Right now, people want to see your resume. They want to see your resume and they want to see why they should spend time with you. And when they go search you and when they go Google you and when they go find you, if all they see are pictures on Instagram of you in a hot dress, a pencil dress, showing your, your booty, or you traveling the world, not looking into the camera, off in some vague distance, they're not gonna take the time to get to know you. This idea of real and raw and being clear and being someplace where people can go and, and rest themselves for a moment because there's somebody who can speak life into them, speak courage into them. Again, I'm probably wrong, probably shouldn't listen to a word of this. This is me just pontificating. But I believe, I know in my world, my resume is serving me well right now. So I'm going to encourage you to be a place, to be a source of calmness, to be a source of sensibility, to be a source of reality. Your fears, your this, your that, to where people can say, I, I, I found a tribe. Because I'm guessing this probably isn't gonna get better anytime soon like in the next couple of weeks. This isn't gonna get better. I'd like, to make, a, <clears throat> I'd like to make a comment about that, Sean. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, what a, occurs to me is what's gonna be more important than any, maybe anything else is having and exuding the, the confidence and security of a farmer. The, the Jim Rohn model of you gotta be out you know, sowing you some seeds, cultivating your crops. And yeah, there's going to be some hail and the birds and all that sort of stuff. But long term, you're going to get your crops in. So it, being able to talk with your prospects with that kind of uh, mindset, that kind of frame of mind is going to be incredibly important. Just to, because they will, they will duplicate what they see in you. So Bob, as you were talking, so I, I get messages, I get these images that come through my head. And I was in, I was in Mexico City, I don't know, this is probably 10, uh, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. And there was this woman in this beautiful pencil dress, beautiful white pen, I mean, absolutely stunning, gorgeous. And when you were talking about this being calm, that picture showed up. So here's how that translates, calm, Stoic is the new sexy. <laughs> right. So this idea that, that people are looking to, who's going to be able to actually hold on to the rope? Who's going to actually be able to be the one that's standing there when the storms come like, like Bob's talking about? Can you stand in front of the room, Brittany, and not look at everybody as if they're stupid and just love them to death? You know, I love you, know, I love you and I'm playing with you. <clears throat> but your desire, your desire to go serve people, to get them to just do something, at, at, at some point during this crisis will be valuable. Right now, they're not there yet. They're not coming to you on a, uh, on a raft in the middle of the ocean and you're saying, get your ass in my boat. If they were on a raft in the middle of the ocean, they would get in your boat. They're not there yet. They're scared. They're about to get onto that boat and they think they can make it. 
people's uh, the, the the idea of crazy the idea of hysteria please be journaling because it's going to be an amazing experience for all of us so good good con thank you bob for adding that anyone else any last thoughts or comments or questions or Hey, Sean. Hey, Michael. Do you mind if I tell you a little breakthrough I had? No, please. I love it. Awesome. Love awesome. It. So, Gotta be real with Michael, you. Hang on, to that. hang on to that for just a second. I'm going to encourage you all on your social media to share a version of any breakthrough that you've had because people in their breaking down, this goes back to what Bob just said, they're going to need to have somebody who's absolutely growing in this moment. So I want to hear this breakthrough. I would also encourage you to share it in some way or form with either your team or with somebody or with something because it changes the way that they see things. When some, well, oh my gosh, in this whole mess of crap, he's having things good happen to him. What's he doing? So go ahead, share your story. Share your breakthrough, brother. Um, all right. So this, this one's interesting. And I'm going to be real with you. So I've been on these calls a lot. And like, you know, like right now, I was kind of at a point where like my business, like obviously from my results, you can tell like the way I was thinking, right? So I was kind of on a lot of these calls just because it like brought me a sense of community and I was obviously listening, but I wasn't like taking massive action. <laughs> and then finally yesterday, like, like, I guess there was a gap in between my business where I really wasn't doing much. And then finally yesterday, I was like, no, like, Today's the day where I'm like, I'm just making the decision to do a presentation and be as uncomfortable as possible. And I'm going to make it work. And so I finally called people again. And I was like, wow, like, it was actually like easy for me to like do this. Like, I want to share this with people right now. So like, finally, I'm on like the action wave is what I'm saying. Awesome. Like, it was a powerful breakthrough. I, and then like, I'm after I finally like called like, say 30 people, I realized like, that was actually so much easier than I was making it in my head. Like, I broke out of that little mental trap that I had. So it felt really good. And so make sure that you journal that, make sure that you go through the emotions, make sure you go through the feelings because that's the lie. That's the lie that our brain tells us to avoid fear. And all of the things you're seeing in the news and online and every place else is saying, no, no, no. If you do any of that, you're going, you're going to have to meet people. You're going to have to talk to people. You're going to get and it's just all at a subconscious level. So I applaud you for that. I congratulate you for that. I would also ask you to give yourself a little bit of a, a little bit of a reward for doing that because now the brain goes, well, wait a minute, we called 30 people and we got a little reward. I wonder what we'll get if we call 40 people. So give yourself a little reward. I don't care if it's to go make a hot chocolate downstairs. I really don't, but whatever it is you do, you're going to set it up in the brain that this is a gift. So when I, when I got to the hotel here the other day, um, they, they give me the flute, the, the flute platter, the fruit platter, right? So I ate that, but as I was eating the grapes, <clears throat> I was saying, this is a gift that they, listen, the world is giving me a gift. The universe is giving me a gift for showing up here in Costa Rica, right? The dessert that, was, that we got at the monastery last night, they took, we took all of the leaders to a team. We took about 30 leaders to dinner. And we, had, we ate at this monastery up in the hills of, of, of Costa Rica. And the dessert I ate after the two-day event, I normally don't do desserts that much, but I ate this dessert and I go, this is my treat for an amazing two-day event that would have never happened with any other company or any other team. So these little gifts that you give yourself are critical when you have these breakthroughs. Otherwise, the heart goes, mm, I guess you're not ready. Awesome, awesome. And we'll definitely celebrate a little bit. A little joy, like. Absolutely. We need that little joy. And here's what happens is, is guess what you get to say now? I did the activities my company asked me to yesterday, and I got to celebrate with a little joy. I love what I get to do. What the hell is he doing that he loves what he gets to do? We're all trying to figure out, none of us have a job now, right? It's that how do you get people to raise their hand and go, what are you doing? Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Michael, for sharing that. Congratulations, brother.
Yay. Anyone else, any last thoughts or comments or questions? Me again. Okay. <laughs> okay, like, so as you were talking about breakthroughs and so sometimes in the moment, I never really realize it, but it's, I've had, am having a breakthrough and it's just how extending love, extending gratitude, everything that Sean Murphy has to teach, like it fills me up to beyond capacity. Like I couldn't even fathom feeling this way. Like I have been exciting i've been happy before but this feeling i want to cry every single time i think about it like i just shared a, the message in my group and it's like even just thinking about how people still came to new york and we were still in central park and everybody was like hey we're gonna we're gonna make it we're gonna do this this is what we're gonna do like everybody together as a family like you can't get that love nowhere else like you literally can't like i just my heart is gonna explode and like or implode i don't know but whatever okay. it is i'm like overjoyed and i am just so grateful like i can't take it i can't like i can't that smile yeah, I can't like, I literally can't even like put it into words. So as you leave the plane today, since there's not going to be a whole big line to get off of the plane, I'm gonna ask you to pass a message from me and you can use it for yourself, but pass a message from me or at least from you to the flight attendants and pause for a second. And you may have already done this, but thank them. Say you're gonna pray for them because they have no choice. They're lucky to have a job. They get, here's the neat thing. Right now they get paid no matter whether the plane is full or the plane is empty. But I bet it's, it's not gonna be long before they're taking shifts as if it's going to the front line. And they're going to be, and the ones who are going to take the shift are the ones that absolutely have to need the money. They're gonna be younger ones. They're gonna be older ones, right? They're, they're, not, they're gonna probably be single. They're, they don't have the husband that was the CEO or the executive, right? Because usually airline attendants are, are marry somebody who is a traveling business executive from first class. So if they're doing these jobs, just take a moment and say, listen, I was, I was on a call this morning. I get on these calls all the time. And it's interesting how we find ways to thank people. So I just wanna say thank you to you for being here. And I wanna, I wanna make it special to know that you got on this, <laughs> I'm gonna cry and I'm telling you the story, that you got on this plane to do your job but thank you for being an amazing human being. So there you go. Love you. <laughs> I'm like tearing up. I just, just thank you for showing up, you know, like to everybody. Oh, I'm like so emotional right now. Cause like the pilots, you didn't have to show up, you know, like, you didn't have to, the flight attendants, you didn't have to show up. Like they are showing up not only for the money, but also for other people who still need to go places. I was listening to these girls talk about how they have to fly back and forth because their school shut down and now they have to go pack all their stuff up just to fly right back home and they're freshmen and they, they're, they feel good because they're freshmen, but like they will be devastated if they were seniors. So it's just like thinking about stuff like that. People who don't have the opportunity to take off work to watch their kids right now, you know, like it's just extremely devastating. But there are, it's so, it's so is a, I don't know if that's the right word, but 
being stoic was literally the exact important word. Like that word holds so much right now because it's like, who? Right now, people are looking for the people who can take that light and guide the way for them, you know, like Moses or something, Harriet Tubman, I guess would be more relatable to me, but you know, they're, they are looking for those people who are still able to remain calm and still are solution focused and forward thinking and visionaries just to help them with the hysteria and just provide them with the answers that they're looking for. Like, I get it. Who would have thought, you know? So, yeah. is it Tashila Freeman? When you say starting, for, starting from nothing as a single mom, where, where are you starting at? What is it that you're starting in? And I'd be happy to give you some guidance. Is it talking about starting a, a business? You can either type it in the chat or you can just let me know. Love you too, Brittany. Thank you. Love everybody. So as a single mom, um, that, 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 I mean, that's, you, you deserve a, a, a global gold medal for that just to begin with, but, but either type in the chat what it is that, oh, just on staying positive and more healthy. Okay. So, um, what I would suggest, <clears throat> what I would suggest is there's a lot of wisdom in nursery rhymes. How many, how many children do you have? How many children do you have? There's, and and, and what, what's the oldest, the oldest one? One child, okay, okay. So six years old. There's a lot of wisdom in nursery rhymes. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. One of the biggest, one of the biggest fears I can imagine for a mom and a first time mom, only because I was married, I am married to a first time mom, but now her son is, our son is 16. But I remember when we were both with a baby. So with all that's going on and all that's crazy right now, I would ask you to read some children's books, do some coloring, stay in the moment because what's going on, all of the craziness that's going on is outside of your home. It's coming into your home through internet, through messages, through Facebook, through text messages. But in your home right now, would you say it's a safe environment? And if the answer to that is yes, then where is all of this hysteria and craziness happening outside? Yeah, but I still have to be able to take care of me. I still need to be able to create an income. Totally get that. But you have a choice. In this moment, choose joy or choose misery. Because if you go crazy, meaning you get, you get all a little excited, a little hysterical about what's going on, you are not in the moment. Sean, so, can I make, can I make some? Uh, <clears throat> what's also occurred to me is, Beyond a biological epidemic, we're experiencing an epidemic of addiction to approval. Yes. All of a sudden, everybody's looking for what should I do by which I'm going to be approved of, or what you know what. So it it uh, tends to dampen our our own natural I, spiritual. Uh, Go ahead. What. No, how can I fit into the herd, right? What? Exactly, right. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's uh, just exacerbated by all these uh, uh, fears, false education appearing real, and, and we, we immediately jump back into our childhood where, oh, am I doing the right thing? Instead of thinking for ourselves, being courageous, being calm, going ahead and sowing some seeds and 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 
And what's happening is, is, is the FOMO, fear of missing out, right? Fear of missing out on information, fear of missing out on what, where, where the next, you know, the death is or where the, the circles on the map are getting bigger because of cases or all of this stuff. If the law of attraction works, and I believe most of us believe the law of attraction, there is a significant credence to that. What do you think is it being attracted right now? You want crazy? You got crazy. You want health? I can show you a group of people who are as healthy as all get out. You want joy? I can show you people who are in joy right now. You want life sucks? I can find you that group. So this idea of what the way we look at things, change the way we look at things and the things we look at change. I agree 100% what Bob is saying is that the reticular activating system for most of us, the RAS, what we, what we think about, we, we find. And what we're finding is, is that we, we don't have enough toilet paper. And I get, so I, I don't know if I told you guys this. So I went Costco shopping, before, of course, before I came to Costa Rica. But I went Costco shopping and I was in there and I, I could feel, listen, you guys know I'm, I'm pretty in tune with things and I listen to things. But the, it was interesting that I let my body go through this process because the memories that reside inside of your body, inside of your cells, when I walked in, I was laughing. I was laughing to myself hysterically because the parking lot was like Christmas Eve day, everybody shopping for the gift. And I walked in and I could, I literally felt it in my body, the pandemic, the hysteria. And it triggers some, some primordial, some, alligator brain stuff wait a minute i, I can't be the i'm not going to get the last one i'm i i i got to get it before it's gone kind of mentality and nobody was yelling nobody was screaming now as it relates to paper towels they had plenty of toilet paper but paper towels there was only two two cases left at, at costco two two packs of 12 or whatever it is I didn't hang around to see the fight for the last two. <laughs> so I say that, and then I went to Kroger. I went to do some grocery shopping. Here's the funny thing. There was nobody in Kroger. Your normal attendance at Kroger at 10 o'clock in the morning. I was trying to see if I felt that same feeling of hysteria, of pandemia, of whatever it was, of just lunacy. And it wasn't there. So the idea of herd mentality, the idea of addiction to approval is beyond real. It's wired into us. And there's psychologists coming on TV and everything talking about why are people hysterically going to buy bread and hysterically going to buy... They're buying things. What they say is they're buying something that they can be in control of. Which is why I would believe it could be a critical conversation for you to have with people about having an open dialogue about what control looks like to them and how do they work to get that back. Here they were buying paper products when they could have... Uh just gone for the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I, I poured myself another quarantini. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the memes that are coming up and everything else, it's just absolutely hysterical. Well, there you go, folks. Thanks for joining me on this Sunday from Costa Rica. Um, let me walk outside here. I'll show you guys. Can I share one last thing? Sorry. Please, please go ahead. Okay, so this is just so crazy, right? So as I was just talking, you know my friend Ashley, who, who's always on the call? Yeah. So, to, yeah, so today she's not on the call. But literally as I was talking, she texted me and she said, she said, 
remember that day we were talking about how we felt full? I think we finally got into a space and energy where God needed us to be and to now learn to feel like that every day when we release what's going on. I said, wait, you're on the call? I didn't even realize. She said, I'm actually not. I just got out of church. I was like, yo, you literally text me that as I was talking about feeling full. And she didn't even know it. How cool is that? That's very cool. Well, y'all, there's going to be a level of connection between human beings in the coming months that hasn't existed before. You have a chance to be the connections that people are looking for because right now they got plenty of connections they don't want. They've got plenty of wired in information that's coming to light of what they don't want. You get to be the connection they're looking for. So you're going to have to raise your hand. Before we used to raise our hand and go, I need help. Now you can raise your hand when they go, who do I look for? Look for the guy with his hand up. Look for the gal with her hand up. Hope that helps. I appreciate you all. Send some love to each other. I'm Sean Murphy, founder of Mental Profits. I'll see you all where? At the next event. Love you all. Bye. Love you all. Bye, everybody. All my listeners have a blessed day. Be safe, everybody. Love you tons. Everybody be safe. Bye. Have fun down there, Sean. I will, brother. Yeah, take care. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Okay.